hit home runs and oh here it is now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Mr. Well, I was calling him perfect and Joe disagreed. But we'll talk about that. <laughs> no, she can... said you were too perfect. You're I perfect. said Jonathan can never be perfect enough. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. A Republican senator from South Dakota, Senator John Thune, former White House press secretary under President Clinton and contributing editor to Vanity Fair, Didi Myers back with us. Perfect as well. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> fabulous is the word I use. New York Times reporter Jeremy Peter, who I've never seen in person, Peters, Jeremy. But his perfect. hair yeah. was <laughs> also perfect. Perfect. Um, and then uh, Sam Stein's back at the table as well. Perfect. Not perfect. It's very, <laughs> very much not perfect. So let, let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, we've got to sit here, but i got to go to you first because you cover the Hill for the Times. Immigration reform, we hear the Republicans on the House side are going to kill it. What do you think? Well, did you read Tom Cotton's op-ed in the Wall Street I Journal? I did. There was like, I would say, a 12-point list of grievances. That mm -hmm. is, you know, <laughs> he's, he's I'm, I'm, I'm not being facetious. I think that illustrates how difficult it's going to be to get this through the House. Now, is it dead, dead? You know, nothing's dead until it's, until it yeah, is. Right, right. But there is a tough road to go. Yes, yeah, Senator, would you agree with that? Well, I think it is, Joe, but, you know, I've been in several meetings this week with House Republicans, and there are a lot of House Republicans who think that, that want to legislate on this issue, that want to do something, but it's going to be tough to thread the needle, and I think you have to find that combination of people who, there are going to be a lot of people who aren't going to be for a path to citizenship, but there are people who are for legalization, right. uh, you know, as subsequent to some border security measures, and so... Will Democrats in the Senate support that? Well, that's our, our, for, for Democrats in the Senate, is it about uh, is it about citizenship or nothing? Pretty much, and, and that's where if you get into a conference, that's going to be the big the big rub. But uh, I think that uh, in, in chatting with a lot of House Republicans, including a number of the conservatives, many of them would like to see the House act on the issue, but it is going to be difficult. And I think if they do it, they're going to ha they can't do it like the Senate did. They can't do a big comprehensive bill. They're going to have to do it in pieces. And if they do some of the border security pieces first and give people something to vote for there, uh, they may be able to get uh, some legislation passed in the House. D.D., would Harry Reid's Senate uh, agree to a bill that doesn't grant citizenship but provides legalization? I think that's a very tough sell um, for the Senate, um, especially since they passed a bill, a comprehensive bill that does all of this, and they're going to go back and, um, you know, take that take that provision away when it's already passed the Senate. It'd be a very tough sell. Yeah. The, big, the big bet right now is that uh, the House will come back and they'll do something with border security and something like the DREAM Act, uh, which mm -hmm. is sort of the pared down version of this comprehensive bill and then you know walk home and say well we did something and you know I wonder if that's going to be good enough for uh, pro reform advocates at this juncture probably not they're not going to want to split it yeah. right they're not going to want to take give just one group of people that the, the path to citizenship without you know dealing with the sure. question more broadly yeah that's but, but, but Jeremy if if the Democrats uh, face the choice of nothing mm -hmm. or passing the dream act do they really walk away from the dream act uh, it's it's a good question. I mean, there is such a cry, as Senator Thune said, for uh, you know a path to citizenship from Democrats mm -hmm. in the Senate. I think there's an interesting split happening right now among conservatives in the House, which is that you're hearing more and more of them, some of the most conservative members, like Bob mm -hmm. Goodlatte of Virginia, mm -hmm. saying that they want the children taken care of, the people who were yeah. brought here unwittingly through mm -hmm. no fault of their own. Right. And that is uh, that is the kind of compassionate conservatism, mm -hmm. if you will, that I think a lot of Republicans are saying, okay, well, this is something we can handle, but legalization for the others, no way. You know, it might be that you need to wait to the next Congress to do something about this, because that's when a presidential election actually is in focus, as opposed to just a off uh, midterm election when it's just members. You could say Congress. that about a lot of things. But does that make it easier or harder? Well, it makes it, it makes easier it for Republicans, because the Republican nominee who's running for national office isn't going to be bogged down uh, with an anti-immigration uh, platform. I think if anything moves in the House, it's going to have to be, they're going to have to come up with a strategy that, where they can pass it with Republican votes because I don't think they'll get help from Democrats if they do these things piecemeal and it doesn't have the path to citizenship. Uh, now, there may be some Democrats in some states that would vote for elements of an of immigration bill, but I think the Republicans are going to have to think about as they pursue this and move forward, how do we get 218 Republicans to vote for this? Okay, let's get to Obamacare or the president's health care plan. Senator Thune, you and along with 45 other Republican uh, senators sent a letter to President Obama 
Uh, you know Mickey's going to love this one. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way you state that you want to permanently <coughs> delay the implementation. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you want to get rid of it. Right. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's, it's okay. So it's. <laughs> semantics, I mean, it's it's semantics, it's semantics. It's semantics. Semantic. Um, it, there have been a number of votes in the House to repeal it entirely. And, you know, when they came out last week on Tuesday before Independence Day through a blog post and dumped this idea of, you know, um, canceling the employment mandate in the bill. Uh, obviously, a lot of us seized on that and said, well, wait a minute, okay, that's great for small businesses who've been complaining about having to comply with a mandate, but what about everybody else? What about the individuals that are going to be hit with the individual mandate? You know, let's let's delay this, at least delay it uh, as they have proposed for a year, but of course, most of us would love to see it delayed permanently. Well, I mean, the, the individual, you even, you even have progressives that are talking about getting rid of the mandate, getting rid of the employer mandate. This is actually something that could happen yeah, on a permanent basis because liberals have always thought, a lot of liberals and think tanks have always thought it was a bad idea. Well, and if you think about how it works operationally, Joe, it's 50 employees or more. You have right. employers have to offer plans that are government approved. And and then you, in, in full time is defined as 30 or more hours. So you've got more and more people that are being pushed into part time jobs because employers don't want to have to deal with a mandate. So as a practical matter, it was becoming, it was hurting jobs. It was hurting the economy. And I think the administration recognized it's expensive. It's complicated. They were hearing from businesses and they decided to delay it. And D.D. Myers, and I, I was saying this in real time during the debate, I had so many small business owners in Pensacola and across my, my district come up to me while this debate was going on saying, and just saying this, you know, a couple years ago, I'm going to have to take my best employees. I'm going to have to knock them down to under 30 hours. I'm going to probably lose them because I don't have a big enough margin to be able to afford this. And it seems that the White House heard that so much, so often from so many small business owners that they realized this really was, as the Republicans have been saying, going to cause a real drain on the economy. Yeah, well, the vast majority of small businesses with 50 plus employees already Im provide insurance. And so the no notion that all of a sudden this creates some completely new paradigm is, 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 not, is not true. There are some that don't, and, and, and it is complicated. Um, but I think, you know, the White House has always recognized um, that the devil's in the details with this. Right, and this is sort of now they're living in that space where this is an, a very complicated bill, um, one that was you know there's a lot of compromises in getting it done, and now they're in the phase of trying to pass the regs, write the regs, create the exchanges and stuff for the individuals, and and make it operational. And they understand that if they don't get it right, um, the bill can't you know the the law in the long term will be much more difficult for it to succeed. And so this is a you know this is where the rubber meets the road. For I now. think so, and I, I I understand the debate over the employment employer mandate. Even uh, the New York Times had a piece on a restaurant that would love just to see what you're trying to make happen happen. Having said that, are there parts of the John bill... John Thune, New York senator, Times senator. <laughs> are there parts of the bill that you think are good you. for America? You, you guys clip that part right yeah. there. <laughs> senator, are there parts of the bill that you think are good for this country? Well, I mean, I think there are things that have to be addressed in health care that are problems. And, and you, you've talked about them, Mika. I think you have to deal with pre-existing conditions for sure. Uh, uh, you know, most insurance companies have already agreed to cover kids up to 26, which is something that was required in the bill. Um, obviously, there are a lot of people who don't have access to health care coverage in this country who, who need to have access to it. And so... And do you think they should? Sure, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and But we just decide... Our view is that you didn't need a massive 2,700-page bill and 20-some thousand pages of regulations to deal with some of these discrete problems in the health care system. We could have dealt with those in an entirely different way, and that's the way we'd like to see this approach. When you do something this big and this massive that affects one sixth of the American economy, uh, I think you really create a lot of problems, and that's what the administration. Well, is I have a finding. question on that because at some point you have to recognize that the law of the land is the law of the land, and what it seems to me from uh, the big macro perspective is that Republicans are, uh, by and large, trying to hurt the implementation of the law, then turning around and saying the law is not working. So a perfect example of this is the NFL trying to help uh, facilitate uh, the, the exchanges, uh, making sure that the information is out there. Why was it so important to you guys to make sure that the NFL didn't help facilitate the exchanges when you knew that part of what helps the exchanges work is getting people signed up? Right. Well, and we, I, our view on this, Sam, is that anything we can do to delay the implementation of this, to insulate people from the impacts of this, what we view to be the harmful impacts of it, uh, is a good thing. And there was another thing that was sort of underreported this last week with regard to this whole subject, and 
that is that the administration is going to allow pe people to self-report their income when it comes to eligibility for subsidies and the exchanges. And I mean, that's that, it's it's astounding, really, that you would allow people to come in and say, well, "This is what my income, and if I can get a, a bigger subsidy by having this am this amount of income versus this amount, uh, that they're going to allow that self-reporting." I you, think that's, just, that's a recipe for work fraud. on the IRS for us. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah, good luck with that. I'd appreciate that. But I guess the I question is, why not work with the why not work with the administration to make the law better, as and recognize that it is the law of land rather than just say we're only going to work on it if it's required. Well, and I think in in the end, I mean, we recognize that there are things about this that if it could be done in rifle shots, it might be sure. able to fix it. Yeah. I mean, the, the medical <clears throat> device tax had a big vote in the House, had yeah. a big vote in the Senate to repeal that. That's a, already a, there was a great op-ed in the um, I think it was the New York Times or Wall Street Journal earlier this week that talked about how that's impacting innovation. So we there are things that we would like to do to, yeah. to, to deal with the more problematic pieces of this. But if they're going to come out and say we're going to delay the implementation of a major key component, uh, our argument is let's delay this thing and, and let's get to a point hopefully in a future Congress, maybe a future presidency where we can do this the right way. Well, Senator, one of the things that I hear some of your Republican colleagues slightly concerned about is, you know, while you were, uh, you know, a lot of you were very thrilled to hear that this president was delaying a key part of this, you risk sounding like I told you so if you say, you know, this is failing, see, we knew this was going to happen all along. So I wonder if you're concerned that you might be, you know, dancing on the grave a little bit too gleefully. Well, I think in, in many respects, if, if you look, Jeremy, we're, we're sort of responding to where the public is on this. If you look at all the public opinion polls, people are still very sour on this idea. Uh, I think they see the idea, the possibility that they could lose the coverage they have. They see premiums going up. Uh, they know taxes that are going up, or taxes are going up. And so I think there are just lots of issues related to this. And so I think where we are right now is on the side of the public. And uh, we don't want to be, most of us voted against it. So, you know, being naysayers about it and in, 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 in suggesting that in its implementation it's going to be very difficult, I don't think is anything that uh, we haven't said before. Hey, Jeremy, so uh, obviously we've been hearing and been talking about Democrats in the Senate especially concerned mm -hmm. about the implementation, mm -hmm. of, afraid that maybe Kathleen Sebelius and HHS weren't going to be up to responding as quickly as possible. Was there at least behind the scenes relief from Democrats on the Hill? Like, thank God we're not going to have to defend that in 2014. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I, I would look at it this way. Like, to the extent that the, the employer mandate is no longer in the picture, it doesn't really help Democrats. It just takes away something bad that might have happened. So right. I think that what they need to do is they need to find a way. And you're starting to see this with the president's uh, the OFA and, and his group that they're advertising about the benefits of Obamacare. I think they need to find a way to sell this and convince the public, as the senator said, a, a skeptical public, that this is sound policy. Okay. All right, Senator John Thune, thank you very much. Thank you, John. Say hi to Brittany for me. I will. Thank All you right. very much. Tell her to email me. I will. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> she sings good. really well, Great too. Team. She needs to. And I'm glad to up. see that you've got Joe eating healthy. Well, Those are sure, surely his apple no. slices. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're no. mine. No. You wouldn't touch these. We're, we're the donuts. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Exactly. Hey, hey, John. Yeah. John. Yeah. The right here. Yeah. Right here. you got to get here in the 6 o'clock. Jeremy Deedy, stay with us.